guys, this is probably the last video. I, what is this? Oh, my, it's my hoodie. It's my hoodie from Google. <laughs> um, I didn't want to make this video, but I have to make this video. And only I can really make this video, like, unless there's other very famous IP attorneys. So many of you don't know this, but I have two other YouTube channels and one is over 20,000 and the other one is over 10,000, like 11,000 plus. And on my marketing channel, I do talk about patents and I'm gonna talk about patents and IP. And in one of the live streams we did, we really got into the details why Magic is failing today. I think it is 100% due to their IP. Now let me, what's IP? In intellectual property. The best example, I'm gonna use a Halloween example, is if you see the kids, hopefully now that COVID's been, you know, COVID is a little less dangerous, I assume. I, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Right? I don't wanna be canceled on YouTube. So there are some certain topics you can't talk about. Joe Biden is a very dangerous topic to talk about. And uh, COVID election, you know, blank, blank, you know, you know what's happening with a ballot, blank, blank. Uh, as soon as you mention those words, YouTube, has like five people look at your video before it published and then they cancel you. But anyway, there's certain things we cannot mention, uh, COVID being one of them, but hopefully things get back to normal and kids go trick or treating. So I live in a very popular neighborhood. We are kind of the rich neighborhood and we live in a very poor town called Humble. So a lot of times people will trick or treat. I, When I first moved here, my first few years, before COVID of course, we had 100, 200, 300 kids. I'm not kidding because we're right next to an elementary school. So there's an elementary school in my neighborhood. So obviously there's a lot of kids, right? You see school buses go by back and forth. I mean, this is a very good place to trick or treat. And I always give candy this year or giving candy or Pokemon cards or both. Uh, and I always buy, buy tons of candy to get. But anyway, my point, Back to the point, but I have to emphasize this. If a kid comes up and they're in an Elsa costume, you'd be like, oh, cool, Elsa. If a kid comes up in their Iron Man costume, you'd be like, oh, Iron Man, Marvel, Disney. If a kid comes up in a magic costume, you wouldn't know. You'd be like, oh, is that Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, Stranger Things, cool. If they dressed as a, you know, a Jace, or they dressed as a Johnny, or a Nico Bolez, nobody would know who they are. You would just be like, wow, that's a weird kid. If a kid went into school and they dressed up as a Jedi, maybe there's some confusion. Are you Obi-Wan? Are you Luke? Are you another Jedi? Maybe there's some confusion, right? But for the most part, you'd be like, oh, Star Wars. At, at the very least, even if you don't know the exact costume, you would know Star Wars, Marvel, right? Oh, okay, cool, Doctor Strange, right? If a person dressed up as Jace or some type of tampered down Liliana or Chandra or a Elspeth or any, nobody would know who they are. I guarantee it to you. And you might make the argument, oh, well, it's not for kids, right? Star Wars and Marvels, they are more Disney, it's more kid centric. But even outside these properties, Pokemon, if you dressed up as a Pikachu, people in the class would know that you're a Pikachu or you're an Ask Ketchum or you're a trainer of some type or. You know, you'd have a stuffed plushie, which would make it super obvious that you're a Pokemon trainer. But if you go to an anime convention, so let's, okay, hey, Halloween, it's for kids. Maybe they don't play magic. Got it. Okay, what about an anime convention? How many times in an anime convention, like Fire Emblem, a lot of people ask, why am I buying Cypher cards? I actually just got a Dimitri to go with my outer guard. Because when there's an anime convention, people dress up as Fire Emblem characters. So this is an anime convention or a comic convention or something along the lines of that for adults, for most of the adults. I mean, kids can be, go there, of course, right? But if you don't think the Halloween example is not is uh, appropriate because maybe your argument would be, oh, kids love Star Wars. They love Transformers. They love, you know, somebody's a Bumblebee when Bumblebee was a pop you would be like, oh, it's a Transformer. Even if you didn't realize it was a Bumblebee because the costume was not well made. 
But, but anyway, you know, maybe it's a handmade costume. But anyway, you would know. You'd be like, oh, Star Wars. Oh, Marvel. Oh, Disney. Elsa. Okay, cool. Disney Princess X Y Z, right? Um, but you wouldn't know that about Magic. And this is so. Number one, I'm making the argument that Magic's IP is very weak. Or somebody dressed in Yu-Gi-Oh with the crazy hair, you would know it's Yu-Gi-Oh, right? You'd be like, oh, so you're some dude in Yu-Gi-Oh. Or, or they dressed up in Dragon Ball Z. But these are kids. Again, these are kids. Let's let's say that's not a fair comparison. I think it is a fair comparison. Because like what percentage, if you go to the Halloween store, what percentage of sales is Magic the Gathering costumes? Probably 0%. I would imagine it would be very difficult because who would want to do that? But okay, go back, go back. Okay, go to an anime convention, right? An anime convention or a pop culture convention or a comic book culture convention. Well, you might see some League of Legends, you might see Fate Grand Order, depending on what convention it is. You might see, you know, Spy X Family, which is the most popular anime right now. My Hero Academia. You might see a lot of really cool stuff. What I guarantee you won't see is a cosplayer in Magic. It simply does not exist. Now you'd be like, oh, well, that's not fair. What about Magic Fest? Okay, <laughs> let's talk about Magic Fest. Uh, numero uno. Pot turnout is very low. This is not a, a, a inclusive, uh, no, yeah, inclusive event where non-Magic players would have any fun time. This is not like if you have a family member or a friend who doesn't play Magic, this wouldn't be the place for them. As opposed to an anime convention, you could take them, and they would want to go to an anime. So a non-anime fan, if their you know relative or significant other is an anime fan, would probably be okay going to an anime convention. Because there are things to see, things for them to do, and even if they don't watch anime, it, there's an artist alley. There's you know some events they can do, some uh, speaking things, right? They can uh, learn about crafts and making stuff, which it might be interesting to them. But at the Magic Fest, it is only Magic, and the number of cosplayers. Again, we can argue this. I would argue that the cosplayers found a niche that is Magic players that are simp's. And these, I mean, we can go, I mean, I can get into really the weeds, but I just want to make my point about simping and OnlyFans and how much, you know, how they're targeting the magic community because they're a bunch of losers. I can go into arguments about that because, I mean, imagine um, a OnlyFans female, let's call them a female, a cosplayer. They, uh, I saw a post on Twitter saying, hey, I need to buy magic cards, buy my nudes on Twitter. I'm not kidding. It was on my email. I, I have it. I, it's like, it's like, wow, cool. That's how they're average. They're not going to buy magic cards, guys. They don't even play magic. I'm sorry to tell you this, guys, the people on Twitter, especially Twitter, who are always saying, hey, buy my nudes and I can buy magic cards to play with. They don't even play the game. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you've been hosed. You've been deceived and you've been lied to in a way to get more money for OnlyFans. All right, topic, okay, I, there's a lot of topics I need to cover, but I'm trying to like get to my main point. Number one, I think we can all agree the IP is bad. This is just cosplay. This is one example, Halloween costumes. This is just one example, costumes. Let's go to manga. I think there's someone in Japanese that get translated, but for the most part, there's not. Let's go for TV, anime, Netflix, whatever you call it, right? None. Movies, none. So, What's going on? You know, what is going on? Even a brand new card game, I'm not going to mention which ones, they can attend events like CollectorCon, they can have lines, they can promote their product to people who don't, are new to the game. Even a random Kickstarter that turned out to be a scam where the, older, the uh, previous person died, <laughs> they can generate more interest via marketing you know, in-person marketing and then Magic the Gathering with its billions of dollars behind it. My argument is very simple. Magic for a long time got away with a lot because the game mechanics are really good. They never focus on their IP. Um, their IP is not the Black Lotus card because the Black Lotus is not a character. Uh, the best example I have of IP would, of what IP actually looks like, Pikachu Charizard. 
you go to Russia, people know what Pikachu is. They know Pikachu. They know Charizard. They're not gonna, unless they're a magic player, they won't know Jace, they won't know Liliana. That's the IP. The IP is very valuable because it creates something called goodwill. And if you ever sell your company, goodwill, like a Coca-Cola, their entire, their goodwill is probably a hundred times the actual uh, supplies and accessories and the, the way that the, the plantation, or not the plantation, the plant that makes Coca-Cola is worth one one hundredth of the trademark because anyone can make soda, but Coca-Cola, and that's the trademark, that's the IP. So as an IP attorney, I look at the IP and magic, it's very, very poor compared to even new games, even the new games do a better job with their IP, in my opinion, than magic. I'm not gonna talk about which games because we, we'll get into this you know, back and forth. It's very sad. You have the best game with the best mechanics and it is, in my opinion, when I used to, I don't play Magic no more. I've been very honest about that. I haven't played Magic or gone there pre-release for two years since COVID, since even before beginning of COVID, I just stopped because it wasn't fun anymore. It's no longer a good time for me. I don't have fun at pre-release. I used to go five pre-releases a weekend. Now I just uh, make videos and it's a lot. It is, I mean, you haven't seen a pre-release. I used to make pre-release videos, right? About what I traded, the deck tech, and you haven't seen that in years because it's so boring. The IP is absolutely non-existent. They have done a very poor job managing it. They have done a very poor, while everyone is expanding their IP, right? Look at League of Legends. They have Arcane on Netflix, a really good show if you haven't watched it. Somebody watching the show big, like, oh cool, I like Jinx. I like that little hammer dinger dude. Yeah, let me play them. I like Jace, that's cool. That is expansion of IP because people watching the Netflix show may not play the League of Legends and people like me who used to play League of Legends watches Arcane and it's like, you know what, I'll pick it up again. Let me see if I can have some fun. Magic is not that way. It had MTG Arena, it had the NPL, it had everything going for it, right? Like even League of Legends, think about League of Legends in the professional league. It's got Jensen, Double If. It has not only the characters you can play, but people. People made famous by League of Legends. And they're human beings, of course, what I'm talking about. Magic, they don't really have any good human beings. I mean, if Autumn is the person and she's canceling Teresa Nielsen's and other people like myself, then this is not a good representation of your community in any regard because it is a very, very toxic uh, culture that's being formed of cancel culture. So back to my idea. I think magic is on the way out. I hate to say it, I have a lot of money invested in this game. I have more money than you can ever imagine invested in this game. I am, you know, I picked up these today. Oh, so I'm still picking up cards that I always wanted to own. Obviously, this all kind of goes in one EDH deck. Uh, picked it on buy list. The buy list is relatively high for what they are worth, but that makes sense because they're kind of a safer place to put your magic investment, if you will. Um, I don't think this game is gonna last that much longer. I think it's got five good years and maybe 10 years total, but it's like a terminal disease eventually it's gonna kill the game. And the reason as an IP attorney, I can tell you that the properties that do really well, Nintendo, do you know how old Fire Emblem is? Like, check it out. Fire Emblem, I think the first game came out in like super, not even super, I think just original Nintendo. It's still going. And it's still going stronger than ever before with Fire Emblem Engage, and there's gonna be a lot of noise about that. That's why I gotta pick up my Fire Emblem Cypher cards before that happens, uh, before it releases next year. So it's already been announced, but there are things, Mario, right? Mario's got a movie coming out. Uh, Sonic had a movie. He has actually two movies. I mean, he might have three movies. I don't know what how many movies they're on right now. If Money Effing Sonic can get a movie, why can't Magic the Gathering get at least, I mean, if League of Legends can get arcane and it's back to the Halloween thing. You know, if you want to look at the younger demographic and what they're interested in, Magic the Gathering is 0% interest. There's no young kids unless they're being forced by their parents to play Magic, 
to get promotions and money. Again, we have that individual, we have that situation coming or having been done, right? When, you know, not only are female magic players extremely rare, children are extremely rare. So then when you have a female child playing magic at quote, a high level, then obviously it's just a, it's just a bank. It's an ATM machine, machine that you can withdraw any amount of money from. Because yeah, you're going to sponsor any, any store, including mine would love to sponsor somebody like that because it hits two very rare demographics that by themselves are rare, but when you combine them into one individual, it's like having a, a native American who has, you know, who, okay, I'm not going to be offensive. <laughs> okay. Just have, I mean, it, it would be like two categories of individuals that by themselves and you know the little circle that this circle is very hard to get this circle is very hard to get and oh my gosh it's like one person that's kind of what's happening in my with with these these individuals if you will right um it's like the only fan thing so i mean not to compare pair that to only fans but if your population is 99 percent dudes and you are a female who wants to raise a lot of money what you can do is you can start an OnlyFans, do some very simple, very basic cosplaying, and suddenly, you know, you're the, you know, you're, you're, you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not unheard of. This happens in other games as well. So not only magic, but I, what I'm saying is magic is. I want to be positive about magic because it would help me, and the fact that I'm not. And the fact that I'm going to slowly change my name away from MTG should tell you everything you need to know about this game. Because if I thought the future of Magic was bright, why would I do that? I mean, we've been MTG line for decades, right? Decades, or well, close to decades. Yeah, almost, I mean, yeah, I started YouTube in 2009. Um, not on this channel, but another channel. I don't know when I got this channel, but probably 2012, 2013, something like that. Anyway, guys.